It's been with us since 1902, a steel cable in a spiral sheath powering every brake and shift on our bikes for well over a century now. But the humble Bowden cable is facing extinction and it might not even survive the decade. The clock is ticking and will this generation of cyclists be the last to hear that distinctive click? In this video, we're going to examine the evidence. Who is still making mechanical shifters and mechanical mechs? And there are a few. What is being phased out with no rumored replacements? And then I want to look at the anxieties involved in leaving our humble mechanical gears behind and what the anxieties are involved in the new electronic future. And then finally, when might that actually happen? Before the Bowden cable, we just connected our brakes with steel rods. I mean, imagine that. My point being is that there was something before the Bowden cable and there will be something after the Bowden cable. It's just a question of when, I guess. Now, the evidence that I'm seeing right now is looking at the product ranges from our big three group set brands. And at the moment, Campagnolo seem to be leading the way, if you can call it that, in terms of maintaining mechanical shifting. Because although it's not been updated for almost a decade now, we still have Super Record, Chorus, and Centaur available in the range. They're probably a bit overpriced, a little bit hard to get hold of, and they're definitely not being developed. Campagnolo are definitely putting all their development time and efforts behind that amazing electronic group set. And why wouldn't they? That seems to be the future. Get that out onto the market as soon as possible. When we look at SRAM, very famously said that they were going to stop developing the, the Bowden cable shifting system and they haven't really released anything, although slight diversion to that. They did just release that T-type mechanical shifting for mountain bike, but weirdly at the same time said, this is great, it comes on your OEM bike, and by the way, you can buy this upgrade to electronic shifting kit if you want, so a bit of a weird one. Then we look at the big S, Shimano, what are they doing right now? So the only mechanical shifting in the sort of top tier road is now 105, and I strongly suspect that's not gonna be around for very long. Theoretically, there is still Tiagra, Claris and Sora in the range as well, but that hasn't been updated for well over a decade and you really don't see very much of it about anymore. And of course, they did famously just come out with the entire Q's range, which was a big hurrah moment for mechanical shifting vans that looked like Shimano was genuinely giving us new product. But then there is actually DI2 versions of Q, which seem to be very, very popular, especially in city trekking e-bikes. So much so they even developed a hub that actually powers and automatically shifts your rear derailleur. Now that is an interesting glimpse at the future, I think. Oh, and of course there is micro shift still holding on in there and they have actually just brought out a mechanical version of their famous sword group set. Again, it's not particularly famous and how well that lasts. I guess time will tell. Now, there is a glimmer of hope here in the fact there are actually two companies out there which are making some really lovely stuff. There's a company called Madrone and a company called Ingrid who are making beautiful CNC machine rear derailleurs. They're absolute works of art. Be a pleasure to have one on your bike. But what seems weird to me that you would invest you know, six, seven hundred dollars in one of those beautiful machined rear derailleurs, but then you have to come back to a shifter like this, which hasn't been updated since 2013. It'll only really work with SRAM or the GRX, which again has just been updated to the new wireless stuff. And we've seen wireless batteries on the, the GRX and mountain bike range. So I don't know how long Shimano is gonna be supporting that mechanical GRX. That makes sense. Here in the shop, the demand from our customers is definitely about bringing the prices down on hydraulic braking and electronic shifting more than enhancing the performance of mechanical shifting. This bike's a great example. It's in here for a DI2 upgrade. Shimano Ultegra going super cheap right now. Why wouldn't you want to upgrade from mechanical shifting to that when you can? This bike was getting a little bit worn out. It's just been crashed. There's even still some blood on the handlebars. Thanks for that. Anyway, in that situation, why wouldn't you take the opportunity of upgrading to electronic gears? Makes perfect sense. This is also pushed by the demand for wider tires and wider rims. Really enjoying riding 30 mil, 32 millimeter wide tires and also having the ability to invest in our wheels without feeling like every time you pulled the brake on that you're actually wearing out your expensive wheel set. So, Disc brakes are probably here because, you know, we like the wheels more so than we like the braking. In shifting, we're definitely all enjoying the wider ranging and that sharper shift. But I think 11 speed was probably about the limit. If anyone remembers eight, nine and 10 speed, felt indestructible. You could give your rear mech hanger a right good bash and it would somehow still shift. Once we went to 11 speed, we started to have to use, you know, Teflon coated cables like this or extra polished ones to try and maintain that shift accuracy and any sort of light 
misalignment just seemed to cause complete chaos. So I think as we definitely jumped to 12 speed, electronic shifting almost became necessity. Now definitely in every single workshop, I bet you'll start seeing battery charges like this adorning the workshop much more than you would have seen flush cutters and tools for cutting cables these days. So also I see the explosion in use of e-bikes having a massive impact here because if you've got a big heavy e-bike with a battery in there, you're gonna appreciate the extra braking power from hydraulic brakes. But also if you've got a heavy battery, then you might as well just run an electric cable down there and have electric powered gears as well. And we're already starting to see that built into the power units as well. Like Pinion have released power units with the gears built in makes absolute perfect sense. And then in the fitness and racing scene, you know, good old pedaling, you know, the drive is definitely towards wider tires in gravel, mountain bike, and road. All that width has to go somewhere. And we're now starting to see designs where we drop the seat stays down, we narrow out these chain stays. In fact, you might remember when we went to Roulette and we featured the Reap gravel bike and they did away with cables altogether. There's absolutely no way that you could fit a mechanical shift in here. And these chain stays were so thin, they could get a proper like two inch wide mountain bike tire in there and still keep the chain lines and the Q factors absolutely perfect. So the technology is definitely driving in that direction. Okay, can we all just be honest for a while? Let's say you love mechanical shifting and you love the robustness of it and you want to take one of these in your saddlebag with you and replace the gear cable in case it breaks or your shifter becomes decoupled from your rear mech in a mechanical way, shall we say. Anyway, you've got one of these in your saddlebags, you go, yes, I can fix it in the field. Can you, honestly, can you really say that you could remove that broken cable? Remember, most of the time these break just a centimeter or so from the very end. and All this frayed end is stuck inside your shifter. You need little picks and the right technique to try and fish that out or it's snapped somewhere in the middle of your frame. It's been held in by frame bungs underneath or maybe you've even got to remove the bottom bracket or parts of the frame to actually access it and thread a new cable through. Some of you would definitely be able to answer that with a positive yes. I strongly suspect there'll be loads of people watching that you go and look at your bike and say, could I actually honestly replace this? in the field, the answer is probably no. As for things actually breaking, let's say you're out in the field and your rear mech actually takes a massive hit and you bend something or you take a crash and your shifter breaks, you're not gonna fix that out in the field, you're gonna call for a taxi or a mate to come and pick you up regardless. Now, if you were a part of a really big endurance ride and you wanted to try and mitigate your risk of failure by taking spares and repairs, again, you're probably not gonna hunk around a rear mech like this. Now, my background in endurance racing, adventure racing in teams, we would take you know, a rear mech and we'd make sure that everyone on the team had the same thing. Now, in hindsight, trying to do that, even with the external cables we had back then, would be pretty challenging. Nowadays, you've got the advantage that you can just put a wireless mech in your team box and pretty much bolt it on, pair up your mechs, and you're away. You can pretty much do all the alignment work as you ride. You can you know, trim your rear mech and do all your micro shift uh, as you ride, especially from SRAM. That's a massive advantage. And also you've got the ability to actually share batteries. As long as you, everyone's on the sort of the same battery, you can carry a spare battery, share them amongst your team. And probably got a slightly more dependable way of keeping going than a mechanical system ever could manage. So we all know electronics hate water and cycling can involve an awful lot of water, whether you're washing it or just transporting it or out riding in the rain. And electronics are getting a whole lot better. Campagnola are probably at the forefront of that development right now. Their last two electronic group sets have all been IP69K, that's insane levels of waterproof. Remember, you can jet wash this thing and it will still be okay. But also we're starting to answer those questions about what do you do with batteries? The SRAM batteries we're all familiar with now. This is a 56 grams battery. You know, a gear cable for comparison is about 15 to 20 grams. And also you can get little half height ones now. There's people making third party stuff. But also we're starting to think about the charging cables. And now we can just have a relatively lightweight charging cable that you can either clip into the batteries as you go. And we're starting to dispatch of these sort of cradles, although Shimano have just seemed to have brought them back. I think we should probably remember that in the early days of gear shifting on bicycles, not that I was there, when the Sturmley Archer hub came out, if you do some historical research into that, there's a whole bunch of criticism that everyone thought that all those little springs and ratchets weren't gonna be reliable enough to be as part of a bicycle. But Sturmley Archer, they changed, they iterated, they developed, they brought out better product, and that hub pretty much is still going today. Amazing, really. Now, I hear you, yes, but you've got to charge it. 
but I think adventuring has changed. I don't think people go out adventuring now without one, a mobile phone or a GPS tracker or a GPS navigation device or rechargeable bike lights or even a camera to vlog the whole thing. So anyone doing those really big epic rides will tell you I'm pretty sure they've got a battery pack, some sort of fancy charging cable, which means you can charge lots of different devices off one thing and take advantage of any plug socket you happen to come across along the way, even solar panels attached to bikes and some of those really epic trips. So people are finding ways of working in the new electronic era and that's only going to continue. So what about that prediction of the year 2030 when we can see the end of the Bowden cable? That actually came, believe it or not, from chat GPT. Yeah, I know AI and everything and it evidenced it. It said, I can see a point where these are winding down. And the argument that came out was there'll be a time when all the molds and all the machinery required to make some of our mechanical shifting stuff just wears out. And the brands that are making them need to decide whether they want to put it into production anymore. Is it actually cost effective enough to retool to actually make it? And I think that might be the argument that kind of kills it off supply and demand. So with that in mind, how does the next five years pan out? Well, I think we'll probably see Campagnolo dwindle their supplies down for the exact reasons I've just explained. I don't think we're going to see SRAM iterate anything new in cable shifting whatsoever. It kind of leaves us with Microshift and Shimano to hold that baton. And I think queues will be around for a little while longer. I can see it running its product lifespan of the next five to six years, but then there's going to be some pretty difficult decisions to make. Are they going to continue developing that technology or just maintain it, if you like? The one thing that might answer that question is if it becomes extremely popular, there will be a time when other companies, it might not be SRAM, it might be, not be Campaign, no, it might be another brand who says, I want a piece of that market and I'm going to start developing some stuff maybe it's Ingrid components. Could we see a Madrone or an Ingrid shifter to go with those beautiful mechs that they make? I'm pretty sure if there's a market there, someone will want a slice of it and we might see some development. I'm not optimistic, but it might happen. So what do you think? Are you committed to the cable or excited about electric? Are you keen to see electronics and hydraulics come down in price? or are you still nostalgic about the cable? Time to get down in the comments. Tell me what you think. What's your prediction? Or do you think that the Bowden cable is just gonna be here forever somehow? Okay, looking forward to what you've got to say. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It means the world to us, but it also means that you get videos from us in the future delivered in your YouTube feed, so you can enjoy them as soon as they come out. It's a win-win situation. The more subscribers that we get, the more brands take notice, the more stuff that we can do, we review. Our channel grows, our videos get better, and you can enjoy them even more. Win-win situation, so please hit that subscribe button and get in the comments. Can't wait to hear what you've got to say. Cheers.